one and all, this is the Peace Dealer. We are at Sunset Park. I brought some really great guests, friends as well. Um, thank you guys for joining. Yeah, thank you for having us. Yeah. This is this is a nice change of pace, you know, outside. Yeah, the weather's the open. perfect. Mm -hmm, you hear the birds chirping? Yeah. yeah. It's pleasant. No, definitely. Yeah, the birds, it's like the birds just started chirping right, yeah. right when we started. <laughs> <laughs> the sun. <laughs> well, yeah, this talk is about Saturn Returns, the, mm. the grueling, menacing, mm. or so they seen <laughs> Saturn Return transits that... They're definitely transformative. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah. They don't, I guess they don't really truly end once they start. Yeah. No, no, they really don't. No, they it's just, just they like just kickstart the party. Energy <laughs> just starts to flow in these different directions, and the more you learn to just sort of go with that flow, the easier it is. But to resist, Saturn will take you down. <laughs> <laughs> Surrender, no resistance. Exactly. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, this this video is gonna be uh, accurate for you, whether you're you haven't gone through it, you're just going through it, you, you have gone through it. I'm personally going through it right now. Got Saturn and Capricorn, Pluto's on my moon, so. How is it going for you so far anyways? Um, I'm definitely gonna get a lot more into that, but as of now, it's, okay. it's, uh, it's, it's allowing me to feel my place in the world. Beautiful. Where I stand with other people's mm -hmm. viewpoints and how, what contributions I'm gonna be making and how I wanna step into a dog. Yeah, you want to start doing that? Good. And man. that curve from a Gemini wants to stay there, right? All right. Damn. Bring out that chrysalis. Oh uh, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> we got a story. Oh yeah. <laughs> that. But I'm, that's why I'm so honored to have uh, my two great friends right here because I would say they're uh, veterans. <laughs> in this <laughs> journey. So could you could you introduce yourselves as far as like who you are and I know, I know, uh, I know we've introduced you before, but this is where you introduce who we are and uh, how far you've been along the set. Alright, you can go ahead first. Okay, for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Rachel Stewart. I'm an integrative health coach. My channel is Spencer Live Happy, and my uh, sun sign is Pisces, my rising is Leo, and my moon is in Sagittarius. And I'm 34 years old, so I'm like four years uh, ish past my Saturn first Saturn return. Beautiful. Four years post. Yeah. Four years post. Uh, yeah. I four recovered. years post. <laughs> <laughs> so Saturn's in Sagittarius for you. Or in Scorpio. Scorpio. Is it Scorpio? Yeah, Scorpio. Ooh, that was an intense. Yeah, oh yeah, was, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, ruthless. Yeah, a lot <laughs> of lessons during that time. In honor of our, our filming today, I wore my um, Phoenix Rising necklace, so. Nice. Definitely, that's that's what I see a Saturn return is, is Phoenix Rising. 100%, absolutely. Well, what's up guys? I am the spiritual bodybuilder. Justin is my actual first name. Uh, and let's see, I'm 10 years post my Saturn return. Uh, Okay, so I guess I'm like the most veteran here. <laughs> I, uh, it definitely doesn't stop. It just gets weirder. Um, my uh, website, uh, if you'd like to check me out, is www.trinityfitnessastrology.com. And uh, yeah, I'm a Capricorn Sun, Aries Rising, and Aquarius Moon. And I'll definitely have the links to both of your sites in the description box. Okay. So definitely, uh, yeah, but 10 years, that's, that's wild. 10 years. And, 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 and what sign is yours, <laughs> Uh, in Virgo. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It was, so like 2009, 2010, 2008. It was, Two, it was 2008 to 2010, 2011-ish. So, so it's near the beginning or in the middle? For what? Your Saturn. Oh, um, it's towards the end. Towards the end, okay. Yeah. And then the North Node's there, I believe. Yep. That's wild. <laughs> yeah, right? Both of you, I think both of you had more intense Saturn. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, having Saturn as a ruling planet, I mean, yeah. you know, he's, he's, he's been teaching me lessons a lot. Yeah. My whole life. Yeah. But, you know, that's okay. That's why. Wow. It's, <laughs> it's I, I, I feel like the, the deeper we go into that, the more we learn, you know, the more that, you know, we're able to help others and teach others. Sort of like, you know, having like a older brother, older sister, you know, like, you know, come on, dude, smack you around, like, smart enough. Don't be doing dumb shit. 
Right? Yeah, I like that analogy. <laughs> to me, Saturn's been very much so a father figure and father and 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 ironically, um, Capricorns and Pisces kind of have that Saturnian edge because Pisces is like my tenth house energy, and then Capricorn is yeah. on the moon, so I kind of get that feel from both energies in different ways too. Oh yeah, like the yeah. Pisces energy will kind of have me move outside my boundaries and comfort zones like coming out to the park. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, why don't we go to Sunset Park? It's so beautiful. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, Pisces, for me, definitely, they um, they bring different things out of me. It's, it's a little, I, I almost feel like, it, you know, my, my daughter's mother's a Pisces. And, ah, uh, okay. You know, I, I have some other good friends that are Pisces, but there's a there's a very strange thing. It, like, it, because it's so, like, I'm so structured and, and like solid, grounded, and Pisces is the complete opposite. So <laughs> it's like mixes those two clouds of energy together, yeah. and then sometimes you're like, what's, "What's going on here? Like, how do we get here?" Almost like you're like <laughs> jumping around dimensions and stuff. You know what, though, for me as a Pisces, like I was telling him when you had stepped away, that with your astrology, it didn't surprise me that I liked your vibe. Like it felt good. Is with the Capricorn energy. It's the same thing for him with yeah. the Cap Moon. For me, actually, as a Pisces, I do really, really well with with Cap energy, Taurus energy, because it's so grounding. It's like for once, it's like it it brings you to like the earthly element, and your feet feel solid, and and then it feels good. It's almost like you can just kick back in like the couch. And, yeah. I don't know. You, I, it makes me feel very present. Like protective. And yeah, like and just grounded and earthy, and I like the way it feels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's what's up. Mm -hmm. And I, I would say the Capricorn influence is like push me to uh, transform and like be accountable for m my transformation and like. Oh yeah, I see that. Push me. Oh yeah. So, like, appreciate, yeah. appreciate you. What's that, brother? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what we do? Doing the work, super healthy. Yeah, super yeah. yeah. <laughs> shush, shush. <laughs> Word. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so Rachel is. Officially, super homie squad as well. Of course, oh, yes. definitely. We growing, we building, yo. Yes. Mm -hmm. When the whole <laughs> clique has knowledge of self. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Represent. It's right such there. a pleasure to meet you today. Yeah, it's a pleasure to meet you as well. That's what's up. So, I mean, um, we're, we're definitely gonna share our Saturn return experiences. And, I mean, just going through it, I, I, I'm yet to like build the story, but I mean, <laughs> I'm out here getting women spiritually pregnant, so. <laughs> Sorry. Oh Sorry. man, you are, you're, you're just a, you're, you're a stud, dude. I don't, I don't, I gotta, I need responsibility. You all up in those metaphysical realms, dude. Yeah. <laughs> all kinds of chaos going oh, on. Oh god. Right? I need to be responsible for my actions now, so. Mm -hmm. Yes, you do. So it is. But I mean, that's, my experience of it has been really humbling, it's in Capricorn, so it's like, I'm really, I'm, I, I think it's really more um, meaningful to me because in the ninth house, they say, is of the father, I believe, ninth, tenth house, and when Saturn's in your ninth house, um, which I have in Placidus, like, they say your relationship with your father is delayed, like, until after 30 years. Interesting. And my, huh. my father isn't one who's really always been in my life, or naturally even invested in like our family um, my, they both got divorced last year so uh, yeah it's really messy like my mom and my sister don't even talk to them anymore I'm actually the only one that's kind of like connecting just just because really? you know just like to stay peaceful yeah. but and he's an Aries so like uh. I actually understand um, even him growing up he didn't really have the Father influence or figure influence. Yeah, that's usually how it's passed down. Yeah. We don't know anybody. Yeah. 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 I, so. I I met my I well I didn't know my father growing up. Um, I had I had a stepfather, but yeah. I was bouncing around a foster home right around my first Saturn opposition, and uh, yeah. and I, I didn't meet my act, come to think of it I didn't meet my real father until my Saturn return. And, wow. And Saturn's wow. <laughs> Crazy. House to your cap son. Yeah. Which is wow. Which that's is, a that's a trip. Yeah. Learn something new every day. That's what's great about astrology. <laughs> right? It like explains all yeah, the mysteries all of your up. life, all the pains of your life. Like you can find it somewhere in the chart, and it gives mm -hmm. peace, at least for me, and it gives meaning oh, mm -hmm. definitely. and purpose. And Aquarius oh. is like my tenth house cusp, so like the the knowledge of astrology has fathered me. It's like definitely yeah. and the Saturnian influences it, and seeing it 
in people too. It's definitely humbled my Gemini ego. <laughs> Thinking I know like more than I do, and really allowing me to. So I mean, that's why I'm so honored and grateful to to know like real authentic people. Yeah, well, you know, yeah. real recognize real, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's Absolutely. how we roll. Yeah. <laughs> well, <I'm twice>. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, so Rachel, could you could you share um, the intensity of having a Saturn square? Because I feel like that, and even the Virgo placement are like. And since my son is in Scorpio and everything, it's just it's. Your son? I mean, my son is in Pisces, but it's in in the eighth house. In the eighth sorry. house. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I come back that Virgo for you. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. Yeah. Surprise! I'm actually Scarfy. <laughs> no, no, no. My my Pisces son is in in the eighth house. So well, that's like it makes it kind of a Scorpionic energy. Yeah. Program. So we talked about that when on your on um on your show when I did the, when we did the peace talk. I talked about how I feel like I live my life in a very Scorpionic way. I see, and so it was not to me. It was very fitting that even my Saturn be in Scorpio, and so like I said, I just I really identify with the the, the Phoenix the Phoenix rising concept because. It's been, my entire life has been one of just death, rebirth, death, rebirth, yeah. transformation, secrets, behind closed doors, the unknown, you just when you think you've got it, you don't. And so <laughs> hey, this, is, this has been my life. And I hate to interrupt, oh, yeah. I just realized both of you actually have Saturn like on a closing trine from your son, like Capricorn, Saturn, Virgo, and then Pisces, Saturn, Scorpio. So I, I thought that was really interesting. Oh, wow. That is yeah. interesting. So what, is, what what that mean to you? What you? There's that magic, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, yeah, it's right there. <laughs> I, it would give, like, a ninth house effect, which I, the only way I could kind of make sense of it is both of you are, are great teachers of what you do. Oh, so that's I, I think nice. that's how it's going to come. Thank you, sir. Thank you. But, yeah, I appreciate you. <laughs> yeah, I understand. It would be in your fourth house, right, as a Leo rising? Yeah, so Scorpio is um, uh, in my fourth house. Mm -hmm. That's intense. That's my my uh, my south node. So yeah, it's pretty intense. Mm -hmm. So it's Saturn's on your south node. Yeah. And then Saturn's on your north node. Wow, that's interesting. <laughs> that is interesting, yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's even more interesting. It's okay, magic yeah. voodoo. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. It's just <laughs> it's so funny how right now, like, there's so many, it feels like faded things going on. I know, like, little, I know. Yeah, things like that. Like, I'm especially like, even this on? week, it's been just, <laughs> yeah. I feel like, oh, yeah. All, all week for me, it's been so crazy. Yeah, that energy hit me, like, oh, yeah. so intense, too. Yeah. Just not really knowing what the hell's going on, but it feels okay. Yeah, it feels like, good, yeah. Yeah, like, almost like we're protected in a way. Uh huh. Right? It's like, protected, yes. Yeah. Yes, I definitely feel that. It's like, my mind is being blown moment after moment, day after day this week, but it's all good. So it's, yeah, yeah. it's allowing me to just kind of like, okay, Stick let's go, there. let's go, yeah. it's good. <laughs> yeah, all right, <laughs> you know, it's, it's good. Right? So <laughs> with it, um, you know, for many people who are familiar with my content, my channel, they've heard a lot about my transformation story and can even see it. Looking back at my earliest videos because I started making content, somewhere right around the beginning of the Saturn return. So in looking at the beginning content, just even physically to see the transformation, where, where uh, my Saturn return hit me the hardest was with my physical health, physical and mental health, in you know, my day to day, as well as within um, my spirituality and within my work. Um, those are the areas in my chart that really got lit up and it's even without having known that at the time, because I didn't, I wasn't as aware as things of things as I am now. I can see those are the areas where I get hit. So even in looking, you can just visually watch content and see that at the time I was over 200 pounds. Uh, so since then, well, not right now because I'm pregnant, but I had lost about 90 pounds. Wow. I basically, I just it completely woke me up. That when that Saturn return hit, it was about the time same time that I met my husband, and we were dating. And oh, wow. my and he he's just slightly younger than me with his Saturn in Sagittarius. So I hit my Saturn return, and about halfway through he hit his, and oh, so wow. we were like this. So you can only imagine like the first four years of our our <laughs> marriage. Yeah, it's been, say, and you guys made it through that. And we made it. We've made it through. Oof, it was brutal. Both of us being in Saturn returns, we made it through. And so 
what it is is that I just woke up. Literally, it's like I woke up. And there was a series of events, and I had been being primed for several years. Same way you said you have felt, you know, these... I think for many people who aren't there yet, you are going to begin to see signs. You're going to begin to feel and know the areas where, like, you just know intuitively uh, things need to change. Mm -hmm. And then it's like it hits. And for me, it hit like a tidal wave of all of a sudden, I literally just woke up. And it's like, oh, my gosh, who am I? What am I doing? What is this body that I'm in? This is, this is not what I see in the mirror and what I see externally does not reflect what I see on the inside, what I recognize as my soul. And I started questioning everyone and everything, the, the way that I made my money, the way that I lived, the way that I consumed the stuff in my house is when I went on a big minimalism kick and started purging. I changed my consumption patterns, completely transformed the way that I eat, sleep, live. Um, I began to completely wake up spiritually. All the areas, basically when Saturn comes in, will just clean house. For me, you described Saturn as this like father figure or, or brother or mentor. Me, felt like straight up drill sergeant. And, ha <laughs> and having been in the military, I know what drill sergeant energy is like. So that's what it felt like, is he just came in and it was just like back in the military days, like, what are you doing, Stuart? And he came in and he's banging yeah, he, hands and he's like, yeah. you better wake up. You better oh, yeah. wake up, soldier. You got to get to work. Oh, so yeah. that's what happened. I had to get to work. But there was a lot of work that had to be done before I could come into the person that I'm meant to be to do the work that I'm meant to do. And so that, it very early on in the Saturn turn, it just started out as uh, changing, you know, the way that I eat, you know, beginning to lose weight and beginning to exercise, taking my health seriously practicing more meditation and and uh, beginning a more spiritual practice and cleaning out my house, my space, starting to prepare myself for an exit from corporate America and the matrix. You know, these were things, There's you can't just, you know, we still have bills to pay, we still have children to feed, things to do. So that Saturn return woke me up to, I now understand where I need to go and who I need to be and holy cow, the realization of everything I needed to do to go and make that a reality. And so then that's when I got to work and I can't even express to you how many times during my meditations and in dreams the message was so loud and clear. Faster, faster, faster. There's not enough time. There's not enough time. It's what I kept hearing in my mind. Not enough time. Not enough time. I didn't even know what I was racing for. But it, it basically brought me to a point where I could not run fast enough to keep up with the downloads, with the, the, the up leveling, the upgrades. And yeah. so that's when I began to, to work towards getting off of all um, mental health and the psychiatric medications, to be able to treat myself holistically, um, free myself of many of the addictions that have plagued me my whole life, of substance abuse and other things. So it, I couldn't run fast enough. And then what's interesting is about the time that, um, about a year post the, the Saturn um, return transit, it's when I finally, I still felt like there was a lot to do, but finally it's like I could take a breath and I felt like I had passed a test, even though I didn't know what the test was, but I felt like I had achieved it. I, I hit the marker, I did what needed to be done, and then, you know, I, I had so much catching up to do basically to get to where I should have already been, but I wasn't. So it's like I, I was being spiritually, you know, moved to hit that marker, and then once I got there, it's like, okay. Now we're to, to the point where you should have been like two years ago anyways, so now we can begin like the real work. Oh, like that's right. what I felt like the Saturn return that two years, two and a half years, was more or less like the, you know, so let's just say using the, the military example. Somebody who decides they want to join the military but they're 100 pounds overweight and could never even pass the, P, the uh, physical, you know, test, your PT test, they're going to have to do all this working out, dieting, strength training, right. everything, just to get to the point where they could even actually en enlist and be able to, to pass the entry level um, uh, a PT exam like and then that's like yeah. that's the beginning of like okay now soldier you get to go to basic training yeah, yeah. now it's time to so it's like you know but they already feel like they've ran this marathon just to get to that point of the, of the beginning well, and that that's how I explain too. my Saturn return and then it's been really rough since then of course we've, <laughs> we've managed uh, all the astrological transits in the last couple of years that all of you have been uh, part of as well but yeah. That's where I then think leads to today and this um, very magical harvest time. Yeah, four years post. Yeah, four years post. Yeah. And four, you know, it's a number of stability. So that's what I feel like right now. That number four, it's exactly it. And then what do we got? 2020, when I start hitting my five year, then that's what's going to shake it up again. Oh, so. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's shaking shit up anyway. So yeah. All over the place. All right, cool. Uh, my Saturn return uh, was. 
similar in some ways, uh, different in others. I was I was in the military too, um, ten years, and I was actually in 2008 was when um, my started, and I was in EOD school, getting ready to be an EOD tech. So uh, for those of you who don't know, that's like bomb squad for the military. And um, I went from an infantryman, and I just I felt like I needed to do more. I wanted to be GI Joe and go kill terrorists and you know and, and get medals. And I thought I was all hard, hardcore. And I went to school for that, um, and then I got stationed in Texas, and then six months after, I got deployed to Iraq, okay? So I ended up staying in Iraq for 16 months, and that was pretty much the last part of my uh, set of return. And that was probably the most transformational, devastating part of my life. But in retrospect, when I look back, um, it, it, it taught me to be who I am now. It, I, I had a breakdown, and I'm... You know, my Capricorn Sun and Aries rising, and I'm like so stubborn. And uh, I fought it, I kicking and screaming every step of the way. Um, I think it was, so when I went over there, I was a brand new team leader. I definitely was not ready for the job that I had, I had taken the responsibility for. I thought I was, but when I first came you know, to my first um, close call of death, I never felt a fear like that ever in my life, the, the fear of death, and then that got in my head and I, it, it completely broke me down, and uh, you know I, I made some enemies. I lost some friends, and I just I, I sort of shut down. I like dissociated, and I got really depressed. And of course, the military you know throws you on a bunch of medications, and so literally like for the last last six months there, and then like a year after, like I was being poked and prodded and going through the whole medical system, and then finally one. But at, but at the same time, that's when I also discovered bodybuilding. Right, so so I had all this crazy stuff going on, but the, the way that I expressed it, the way that I, I, I dealt with it the best I could was bodybuilding. I actually won my first four competitions, um, and that driving force, that, that pain is what pushed me. But, but I still, up to that point in my life, I didn't know who the hell I was, right? Like, I was conditioned by all this stuff when I was a kid. Like, grew up in, you know, like an Italian family, you know, back east. So they're all Republicans. And they're all like, you know, condition. hardcore. And I was like, I, I never really understood this until I was an adult, but I was always like highly empathic when I was a kid, right? My family, they weren't empathic at all. So I could feel all this stuff underneath and I felt crazy. So I was like, well, you guys are doing this, but you're not happy. Well, why are you acting like this when you really feel like that? And I didn't know how to process it. So I, I became a, you know, a troubled kid and I had to get out of there. So I just ran away and it was, um, I, I created a lot of really deep wounds within myself. And then when I went through my Saturn return, that literally cracked my shell open, um, really. And I guess, I think like the older we are right now, the old generation, they had a harder time with the awakening process. Yeah. The, the, the younger more people, for you. yeah, exactly. So it's like my soul just has to be so, so strong um, in order to uh, process this. But I went from defusing bombs in the military to becoming a healer. Yeah. <laughs> so that's pretty much the, as opposite as as opposite as you can get, yeah. right? Yeah. So so um, I actually like I do body work and and I'm highly empathic, so I can I'm able to work with energy at a really deep level, and um, and I absolutely love what I do. Um, I, I'm also big on coaching, but coaching comes with you know we all coach each other. It's 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 almost like a lifestyle. It's not yeah. really something that you choose to do, and. Uh, and so learning, being broken down, Saturn return for me was basically being completely broken down and nothing. Like, like basic training times three years. Yeah, that, that's how right. I felt. It's like it's yeah. a complete breakdown for a complete rebuild. Exactly. And, and through that process, like if you surrender, if you let go, mm -hmm. if you let the process take its course and if you trust, it's not going to be that bad. Right, yeah. But don't be like me and fight it <laughs> because it just makes stuff so much harder and worse than it has to be like we're always meant to change we're meant to evolve we're, we're meant to grow and our ego when our ego is really strong it doesn't want to grow it likes to stay the same it wants to stay in that safe feeling which is ironic because that safe that safe feeling is like guilt and shame and fear and being stuffed down and it's most people live their lives like that so it's it's really difficult to to have the courage to look within yourself deep enough to want to break free from that mold. However, I would say that today it's happening so much more efficiently. It's 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 amazing. It's a beautiful thing to see. Um, and then yeah, it. I I don't think it ever gets easier. We just get stronger. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And um and it definitely made me very very strong. And then, 
you know, so that's sort of like the blueprint for the growth potential that we have. But then, you know, the universe, you know, if, if you tell yourself, like, I want to live a better life, I want to make more money, I want to have a better relationship, I want to be more abundant, I want to be more happy, the universe is going to bring all those things to you as, as much as you can handle and probably more than you think you can handle. Because it gives that to you so that you can transform and change. And, it'll, it, the, and the more we resist it, the more it's just going to push right through. Like, you're not going to beat the universe, right? <laughs> and our ego sometimes, you know, like, it thinks it can. So that's the big lesson that I got from it. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah I, that's, that's kind of what I'm attacking now. Like, um, the whole concept of being broken. Mm -hmm. um, mm. And my, my ego is like... So uncomfortable. I'm not it's getting super. broken. Like, oh, <laughs> stop it. I, I really feel like... At some point, like, oh, I was just going to pass by, but I'm never going to get broke. I'm just going to stay stubborn in the way I think. But it's and yeah, Pluto's just slowly but surely. Yeah. <laughs> like, you think so. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't. Until nope. something just, like, <laughs> I, I think, I know there's a proverb that says, like, you want to um, strike the iron while it's young because when it's old, it, it gets harder. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we get crystallized in our belief system. Yeah. 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 And, and, and but in like kind of breaking through this is in like my eighth house of Pluto so it's all about Ooh. like breaking all these old belief systems mm -hmm. that I thought I, I logically let go but it's still like it's still in your in your body yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it does it sits in there and it festers yeah. until one day it just gets to the point where you can't really like keep doing the same thing that you've been doing you have to try something different yeah, it's so right. true. and it's an aversion to surrender especially emotionally like I'll, I'll get to a certain point and then I'll just like totally harden my heart and be like no I'm not gonna feel at all and then it's just like <laughs> ebb and flow there but um I think both of you mentioning um, surrender that would be if I were to give advice to viewers who are either getting ready to to experience their Saturn return or just starting it you know anywhere in that range that um Honestly, the surrender and the perception. I, I truly believe, as a, as a Pisces, I truly believe everything in this world is about perception, our perception of it. And with just, honestly, even the, the most minute of shifting of your perception can completely, drastically alter your experience uh, almost immediately. So it's very interesting in the process i had a viewer on my channel once ask me about like the dark night of the soul and things like that and how to deal deal with that you know an ego death dark night of the soul or whatever you want to call it and what i told them is you know during like a, a spiritually awakening process which i think for me i identified with my saturn return period as this massive spiritual awakening process but in hindsight really realized it was it was that, but that came as a result of the Saturn return. And so it all it is is a series of ego deaths, dark night of the souls, like again, <laughs> yeah. again, again. And it's you had made a point about, you know, just like surrendering and, and not fighting it, it makes it easier. And I really feel that that is the defining difference is the more you just say that you're not waiting uh, for a destination or an end of it, you right. just allow yourself in a very mutable way to go with the energy and allowing yourself permission to feel sad, giving yourself mm -hmm. permission to feel scared or frustrated or uncertain or, and I think the more you allow yourself to do that, it, it humbles us that we can then see that mere soul reflection right. to open the doors for the ultimate transformation in the most graceful way. Because at the end of the day, we are... Res and it's interesting that, that you that you brought up this head of opposition, because I, I've actually never really thought about that, especially Capricorn, you know, it being my ruling planet. It really has, and I guess I'm coming up to another one. Yeah. How excited. Yeah, and like five-ish well, I've been doing the work, so, you know, we'll see if it'll go a little bit smoother. And like yeah, you did mention before, um, you have a very amazing story about that Saturn opposition that happens like 17, 16. And um, yeah. I, it got me thinking about what happened um, when that happened to me. And for those who aren't aware, the Saturn opposition is the, the first or any time Saturn is opposite Saturn in your chart. So for me, that was a cancer. I want to say it was like 2005, 2006, 2007. And um, 
my move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, you're not old, you're wise. I'm wise. <laughs> <laughs> you're wise. <laughs> but, wow. yeah, um, I, I went to, I had just finished eighth grade and I was, I, no, I had finished ninth grade and I did 10th and 11th grade yeah. in Kansas because my mom wanted me to have a father figure. And my uncle was in Kansas, so her brother. So I was living wow. with him, so I had like a father influence. So I did high school in Kansas for two years. Oh, wow. And I didn't, I didn't think anything of it until, you right. know, it was just it was mentioned right now. It's yeah. Just, just, huh. with, the, so with the oppositions, it's, again, that's why I said the more I have uh, learned about astrology, the more peace and comfort it's brought to me in so many areas of my life, from relationship troubles to, you know, uh, children you know when and if I was able to conceive and different things issues with parents or uh, you know oh, yeah. different periods of my life where I maybe uh, acted out in ways that I don't look back on necessarily with uh, pride you know and so it was so interesting when I really began of course in the midst and, and after my Saturn return diving into researching and studying Saturn return so I could understand what the heck is you know is happening to me and, and I learned of the, those oppositions that occur. So it's going to be a little slightly different for, for everyone. But because the Saturn, you know, transits that every 28 to 30 years, for most people, it's going to be somewhere that first opposition, like in that uh, 15 to 17 age range. And then again, um, you know, before 60 in that kind of like 45, 46 range. So for me, it's so interesting then to look back at um, 16, 17 years old for me was when I began, I like, for years following, I would always tell people I had a midlife crisis at 17. <laughs> it's like so dramatic, right? 17 year old teenage uh, drama is that I had um, graduated uh, high school early and had moved out of my parents' home, was working full time at a, a 16, 17 years old. And so then at that point, I was renting a room from a friend's, her, her parents, and I was working full time. And I decided I was going to go to college because that's just what you do, right? And I was getting online, getting ready to sign up for the community college here at 17 years old, and it was like I had this flash. It's so dramatic, I know. <laughs> I had, like, my whole life flash before my eyes, and I, you know, if you can think about 17-year-old's mindset, and I was like, oh, my goodness, if I go to college right now, I'm going to live five miles away from my family, I'm going to go to school, get a degree, I'm going to get married, pop out babies, have no no experience, no life at all. My right? life is over. My life is over, and I haven't Why? even seen the world. Oh, yes, yes, exactly. So I right away I'm googling like you know how can I get out of the country? And, uh, I wanted to my Pisces self wanted to join the Peace Corps, but what was the requirement? A four year degree. And I was like, well, shoot, that's really? his, yeah. Even then, four year degree at, at the, the time, at the time, this was like early two thousands. You needed. They were looking only for people with a four year degree. And I said, well, that's not going to help me, and I don't got money. Right. So what's the next best option? The military. <laughs> so that's why at 17 years old I joined the military and I negotiated for a European contract and shipped myself off. But then, of course, just like your Saturn return, you know, there's always that post, that kind of like wake up from the hurricane that you've been in. Is you know then of course in basic training when they're you know announcing that at 18 years old like you know we're going to war and everything. It was like the wake up call of like realizing that little midlife crisis I had. You know at that time I, I did not handle my Saturn um, opposition the way I then later handled my Saturn return at a more mature place, you know, running away up and just leaving, abandoning, you know, because you, you feel unhappy with your current state is not the solution. And the you cannot run too. away. Hmm? And the nodes were involved too, yeah. so it was a right. long time. Yeah, so it's like, you know, and, and then of course, it's not important for this for these purposes, that whole story didn't end well, <laughs> my military experience and everything. And that caused a lot of pain for me. So I think that's the point of my sharing this this story, is that now in hindsight and an understanding of the astrology, it can give me peace to understand and, and be forgiving of my 17 year old self and decisions that I made and places that I went and behaviors that I exhibited in, in understanding. And then of course, then the 15-ish years later, from a more mature standpoint, taking a different approach, not running away from the world or my problems, but rather letting it come in and transmuting it in the process. Right. Mm -hmm. and you know, it's so interesting that, that at that Saturn opposition, that's when we go through puberty. Yeah. Right? So it's it's hitting us on a biochemical level. Yeah. 
external, that's, that's social, no emotional, mental. Right. Yeah. And so it's it's both. All of those. If you're looking at that first opposition for most people, that's at a pivotal time when you're experiencing yourself, social dynamics, yeah. the world, sexuality, you're like learning. And then you look at like the, the first uh, return and that's someone who's about 30 most people at least here in America <laughs> are like just kind of you know maybe finally finishing school like yeah. finally trying to be like okay what should I do with my life besides live in my parents basement <laughs> exactly. and you know and it's that's why it is kind of like that introduction to adulthood yeah. and yeah. then you know around 40 45 ish and when you start having that second opposition it's kind of mm -hmm. like you've been through you have understood you come back from the war maybe multiple times and then maybe you divorced, maybe you've had, you know, a couple relationships or partnerships, you have, you've had children, you, and that's when it's like that opportunity to shake up again before you get to that 60 age, that second return, right. it's that midpoint to be like, okay, let me, Saturn's saying like, okay, let's regroup again here. Right. Exactly. What changes did you make at 30 and are you still good with that? Like, right. are you, because if you wait another 15 years, to, like, at that point, there is no yeah. more like, Chances, like, right. you, you can always. Well, I mean, my mother at 60 went back to college, so it's like, you can always have a chance, true, but, but it's, it's but, not the same. But, but if you notice, like, have you ever noticed that a lot of people around that age, around like 60 or so, they take one direction or the other. They're either super happy like a little kid, or they're yes. super fucking miserable. Yes, right? yes, and they start to take that decline in their yes. health. Yes, and, and they're going to go one or the other. Yeah. And I want to make sure that I'm going that happy area. Yeah, the, the cruises yeah. to uh, Alaska. Exactly, right? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, senior citizen golf yeah. time. And, yeah. <laughs> I think that's the benefit of, like, being able to know the Saturn transit oh. beforehand. You yeah. see the bigger picture. You understand yeah. the deeper meaning of everything. Because we don't see, like, if you're stuck in your ego, you don't see the deeper meaning in anything. You think that what's out here is reality. Mm -hmm. And it is not. It's a construct. We create it. Yes. So, and when we actually fully embody that fact that we create our reality, it's like, well, why the hell does my reality suck? Yeah. yeah. And that's when we start to look at that's all our thoughts and reality. feelings and, and emotions and like, okay, what's going to change? Let's do this. Yeah. Let's go drink some ayahuasca. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. He's yeah. your connect, man. <laughs> oh, so Saturn also is like your career. It's, it's like your mm -hmm. your vocation. I just realized around that time I was having my opposition. Um, it's interesting, too, because like I said, Aquarius is that like father figure energy for me. Um, and, and my north node's there. So I went to live with my uncle, who's an Aquarius. He's married to a Pisces, actually. Oh. And his son is Capricorn. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> That's really the son probably That's had a hard good. time. Yeah, um, I, he, when I was there, he was still a baby. He was still kind of oh, okay. But um, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, it, it would be interesting to see what he went through psychologically. Um, I wrote my first rap at 17. Really? There was this freshman uh, girl who was like 14, 15. She was an Aquarius. And she, she played the she encouraged me, hey, let's let's be a rap group. Like, let's like... <laughs> <laughs> let's be a rap group. I yeah, never it. thought I would ever do that. Just picked it up, started writing. I didn't take it seriously until like later, like 2008 yeah. when I was in college. But she, I can totally uh, tribute uh, or credit her with like sparking that nice. in me. And nice. Yeah, I, th I thought that was quite interesting. And now Aries that I'm going through right? a sad return, it's like I'm ready to take that same craft and like step into yeah. it. And blast yeah. out on the scene, man. Yeah. yeah, without a doubt. No, definitely. And I, I, what, what I wanted to ask both of you were like, how do you feel Saturn has um, influenced your vocations? Because I know yours is in Virgo, which is very uh, physical, and mm -hmm. you're a biohacker. Yeah. You're really like changing the rules on I, I definitely I feel like it's um it's for the longest time I, I, I especially being in the military I was conditioned to like be serious I've always been like high strung and serious until I started awakening and I was like getting in touch with my inner child because you know fifth house is all about the inner child so I uh, it it just it completely I'm finally at four years old starting to learn how to be more childlike but it took a long long time mm. you know because all that social conditioning. Yeah, not uncommon, I think, for, for men in society. Too. Yeah, yeah, it really, yeah. I mean, it's, there, there's so much toxic masculinity out there. Oh, yeah. Which, I, it, it's interesting, um, because, you know, Saturn is sort of like the divine masculine, right? Do you guys feel that? Saturn, I, I do feel that. I've actually felt like Saturn 
is like an older woman who's just a billionaire and cuts checks, <laughs> but she still has that masculine like godmother energy. Yeah. It's like, you know. Yeah. But um, but now I'm starting to see Saturn as like more a father instead of. I, okay. I'm kind of wanting to. I, I'm I'm really wanting to research. Well, that. Yeah, like well, so the ultimate father is 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 the divine masculine. The father ultimate mother time. Is, is yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's how it, it computes in my mind. That's how that's how I feel. I, I, okay, so I, I feel like Capricorns mature way earlier than most people, but they say that men take like up to thirty-eight years to mature. So <laughs> I, I heard forty-three. I forty-three, right? Yeah. I heard, Have you seen? I heard eighty-three. Eighty-three. Oh. <laughs> honestly, I'm just honestly, you know what? Um, <laughs> it takes about nine years for men to mature. Sorry, boys. <laughs> I, from what I've seen, between like forty and forty-six. Okay. Um, anything before that, you know, you're still learning, going through stuff. Oh wow. Yeah, but but again, like most, of, uh, I know a lot of people in the fitness industry and in that like are that type of archetype or that that type of stereotype. So like mm -hmm. like the younger generations are just some. I mean, I've met some 25 year olds that act like they're 40. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Personally, I think as a female having um, you know dated men of different <laughs> ages and ethnicities and races, everything. It's um, I used to think it had to do with age. Actually, as a younger like single mom, uh -huh. because I was looking for stability, structure, right. somebody who's ready to like take on a family, has a job, like right. all these things. Um, I only dated men in their late 30s, early 40s, oh, wow. um, even as a young, like, early 20-year-old female. Wow. Um, however, then when I actually, when I met my husband, he was two years younger than me and was more mature than half of the men I met at 40. So I think, wow. I think again, astrology can, again, explain. There's so many other factors looking at where is that person's Venus, where is their Mars, you know, like, where is their Midhaven, or even what is their, their rising sign, and, and mm -hmm. what, um, and then in areas of, like, their, you know, uh, houses that are impacting maybe their financial outlook or, you know, these types of things. I think that, I think it's not so much even age. I'm glad you said that. I think that it's too. just, I think it comes down to that yeah. unique persons and when in their chart and when in the stars is it written for them to exactly build right, that, yeah. that, you know, that structure and that maturity and that understanding because it also has to do with what is their role. True. And so, um, you know, I want to give credit to the guys out there who are younger who, you know, have got it all together. It's, it's every... It's, and it breaks the stereotype. Yeah, it breaks the stereotype. Yeah, Not all men are uh, immature at a young age. They're, yeah. Everyone's on their own journey, male, right. female, old, young, and we all reach our point when we're meant to reach our point. 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. all that letting go of control. Yeah, exactly. Being okay with not being okay. And, and, you know, to give ourselves credit too, male or female, we fight a big uphill battle with all this social conditioning. Like oh, mentioned. without a doubt. You know, and, and especially, especially even the men, because it's like, how hard is it if they're being so pressured to, to be some sort of pedestal? It doesn't really allow them that emotional freedom to develop the behind the scenes that's Absolutely. needed to have that maturity. So, you know, oh, yeah. it's... It's all worth it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's worth it. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> That's cool because I'm going through it, so I'm, I'm definitely uh, excited. Yeah. Turn it in like a sponge right now. Yeah. But it's gonna yeah, be it's good, good for you because yeah, you yeah. you're already saying, "I feel this. I know this is coming. Yeah, bro, I know a, I gotta wake a up for this." Like, where I was when I yeah. Was there, yeah, I don't think it's gonna hit you like that tidal wave, like it hits many, because you're already consciously being like, okay, like right. I know it's coming, so I mean, maybe I'm not ready to let go of this yet, but I know I'm gonna have to. That's exactly. it's gonna make that that's that surrender. You yep. are already on the process to preparing for that, so yeah. I think it's gonna be better for you. But it, it would be because you got great things to do. You're already exactly. doing them, right? Yeah, it's just yeah. gonna make you that much more powerful. I see like a like a beam just yeah just shooting you up like yeah. right out of a cannon. Yeah. Just, Totally. Yeah, I see your Saturn yeah. return's probably not going to be like, um, I don't know, like snow boots in the mud. It's going to be more like rocket ship or something. It's like you're just going to have to dodge yeah. asteroids. <laughs> that's yours. Go. You're still in the rocket ship, though. <laughs> wow. that's so cool. that's good. And that's that's due to you. That's due to your work right. and the divine, you know, blessing to help you along your journey, I think. Exactly. You, you, you just... You just have the energy of attracting the right people around you. Mm -hmm. and you know why you're attracting them, and you're you're very very aware, brother. Yeah, super aware. Very aware. Which is, I think, what most people lack going into their Saturn return. Oh, Certainly 100%. me. It was like even if there was those things coming that I knew, oh yeah, you know, I, I shouldn't be over 200 pounds. Like you know, that's not like a that was a shocking factor, but 
it still hit like a ton of bricks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you're not if you're not aware or prepared, it's gonna hit you hard. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, and you either answer the call or you're, or you're being pummeled. drugged through the mud. Right. Yeah. And that's when the, usually when people are going through that that time, I think uh, that's when everybody sort of gets caught up in the medical system with you know antidepressants and, yep. and addictions and yep. like therapy and of course you have to. You have to go through it to realize how, how destructive it is, mm -hmm. unless you're really smart and woke, but if you're at that place in your mind, you're probably not really there yet, right? But that's okay, because everything's temporary, and eventually, yeah. uh, eventually you're gonna realize that that stuff just, it, it just, it brings you down to your knees. It, 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 it silences your soul. Yeah. It's absolutely terrible. But but what's really exciting is all, all these new, like um, Dr. Mark Hyman, you know, like he's coming out with, he's, he's a functional medicine specialist, and all this stuff about the microbiome, and, all this stuff, like there's there's so many new exciting um, like revolutions and evolution and all these different practices to help us um, to help us prepare better for situations yeah. like these, yeah. right? The information, granted, like it's a pro and a con. There's so much information out there, but then again, there's so much information. Out there, yeah. Right. Yeah. So you know, if you feel good, then you're going <laughs> in the right direction. Yeah. If you feel shitty, stop going in that direction or stop doing what you're doing. Which, which is great, like people accepting their feelings more, right? Instead of oh, yeah. being taught to just dismiss them or all these are irrational. So yeah. it's definitely, I, I, I totally do see both of you as like, of even even if you feel like your knowledge of astrology isn't the most, I still see you both as like authorities on a Saturn process. And Pluto on Saturn right now, and I feel is like transforming oh. what Saturn transits would be. I think, yeah. I think you're right. So, so what do you both feel about that, and like where we're headed with this, and, and what's what's great advice um, to people who are entering their Saturn turn, going through it, like, especially you, right now with the placements, if yeah. it's going on right now. I mean, you, you, we've all. I think honestly, yeah. we've you've given all such great advice right now that we have we have a nice comprehensive like understanding. Yeah. Oh yeah. But um, I would say more like, is are there any? mindsets to keep in mind when it comes to perceiving the, the greater intensity or, or, or what changes in our system, like what's, what's new, like what's the expect. Let go and follow what feels right. Surrender is the one word that comes to my mind. Yeah. Like, yeah. If you don't surrender, you're, you're probably going to get pummeled, so just yeah. surrender. And I think the more that you can look first to yourself, or even if it's second, if you look first to someone else to cast the blame, to think that they're the reason for the problem, they're mm -hmm. the, even if you don't look at it first, if you can be mature enough to put on the brakes to stop and then look second at yourself before you look back again, that will be the, the best uh, way to bring about the most massive transformation and the, the quickest. Because, uh, you know, even especially for in like my case where I hit my Saturn return, and within a year and a half or so, my husband was hitting his, and I mean, that was pretty, and that was like in the first four years of our being together, we're both in the midst of a, a Saturn return, and it was very intense, and I can't speak for him, but as for me, uh, I think a big part of where there became so much massive growth was every time I wanted to look and be like, blame my husband for this or that, or think he was the reason for the issue or the problem, it was so humbling each time. I think gift from spirit that I was able to then stop and see the mirror that actually the very thing that I am accusing him of or casting blame on him for or, or anyone else for that matter that it was the reason for my problem that I was then able to look myself straight in the eye and see it's actually 100% me because we have no control over anyone or anything other than ourselves and our own reality and so the more that I was willing to do that and look at the actual mirrored reflection and, and not cast blame other than, not even cast blaming on myself, but acknowledging brings about rapid healing and transformation. And, and it makes it a lot easier because then you're not relying on external for happiness, joy, comfort, satisfaction, abundance. Um, you only get it from yourself. Yeah, the, the, the phrase that comes to my mind about that is the obstacle is the way. Mm, yeah. Right, that that darkness that you don't want to feel is what you have to feel. Yeah. And 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 being able to take responsibility, like you said, yeah. and not be a victim, and not you know, not just bypass it, but in a loving way. Yeah. Right. It's so important to be loving yeah. to yourself, and that's one of the hardest things in our society. 
to do. Yeah. Because we're marketed all this instant gratification, you know, exactly. suppress this. It's no good. And people are so quick to like cancel this. Yeah. Cancel yeah. That. Yeah. And, and that's why it's awful. easier. It's easier to either blame them for the problem, make them the reason, or to expect them to be the solution. Mm -hmm. Either which way, it's a constant need within society for us to look externally for the problem or the solution, when both are always only from within. <laughs> yeah. That's been my my hugest life lesson and most humbling uh, yeah. realization. <laughs> Everything's in there. We just need to yeah. receive it. You are the problem and the solution. <laughs> Absolutely. So I do have, I will put this in the links and contact information in the description. But can you explain uh, one more time like, where people can reach you, like, what, what services you have to offer, okay. if they're interested? Yeah, um, you can reach me at www.trinityfitnessastrology.com. And uh, I do one hour consultations. Um, so I, I consider astrology coaching, right? But uh, lo looking at your natal chart and and giving you the information that that you feel you need. Someone was interested in um, combo ceremonies as well. Okay. Yes, I'm also a combo practitioner, so you want to do some frog poison, you let me know. And uh, and yeah, and then um, I also uh, work with a new DNA nutrition company, and and I work with uh, nutrition supplement plans like that too. That's all part of the coaching. Yeah. I still got my combo stars. Nice. <laughs> you look good, man. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Hell yeah. You're a part of the combo crew. Oh, God. And for those interested in learning more about my content, you can visit my website at www.spendsmartlivehappy.com. Or you can find me here on YouTube at Spend Smart Live Happy, uh, as well as on Instagram and Facebook. So you can check that out. I'm an integrative health coach, so I work with the Mind Body Spirit to help people bring about transformation in a way that's for you, by you, and makes you happy. So I feel that we're all our own best inner expert, and that's why I don't help you, I don't like solve your problems for you, I help you in my scorpionic way, <laughs> unearth your own inner expert and, and help you bring about transformation in any area of life that you seek. I also uh, give tarot readings and work with crystals and sound. Thank you. Thank you for uh, tuning in to this talk. If, uh, if you're interested in learning more about your Saturn return, the transit and the progress of it, hit me up for a reading. You can hit them up for consultations too. It doesn't matter the modality. We can bring our experience in and really counsel uh, quite effectively. So be, feel free to comment any questions you may have or comments about your Saturn return experiences. <laughs> and uh, yeah. yeah, I'm glad we could do this talk. Can we offer a discount? Can yeah. I offer a oh, Yeah. Wish, what, wish, wish, sad, Saturn. Saturn? This? Saturn, yeah. So if anyone would like yeah. to sign up for a consultation with me, uh, you can email me for, and use the yeah, code. For the Saturn, if it's like about the Saturn, right? Or, just, or just anything. Just, if we're watching today's video, Saturn. Yeah, right. And you, you'll get a 10% uh, discount. I'll, I'll extend that uh, specifically for Saturn return reading reports if you or, uh, use the code Saturn. Got you. All right, yeah, yeah, I'll jump in on that too. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Let's do it. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, I'll, I'll probably, I'll, we'll, we can specify more of the details of, uh, in the description yeah. box. So I'll put that there too. Absolutely. But yeah, I'm looking Beautiful. forward to many more of these talks. This is really awesome. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, thanks yeah, for, thanks. Thanks for uh, having us on here, buddy. Sweet. Appreciate it. All right. Y'all stay close. Peace.